Mel Bay Grade 2. Uh, we are on page 13 now, and we're going to be looking at tetrachords. Then we're going to look at related keys and the technical names of the scale steps and the chromatic scale. Um, here we go. So this is the page. This is the kind of stuff nobody actually really wants to look at in the, in the book. But let's break it down a little bit. The first thing we're going to do is look at tetrachords. Tetrachords, um, the way it's been useful for me, I guess, is for actually playing the major any major scale on the guitar from any point. Um, the distance between C and D is one whole step. The distance between D and E is one whole step. And the distance between E and F is a half step. So look at the nice symmetry there is when we take the C scale and we break it into two. Let's look at the second half of that C scale, starting on G. It is a whole step from G to A, a whole step from A to B, and a half step from B to C. So really, see the parentheses one here? So that's just meaning that, you know, ju just, just remember that two tetrachords are a whole step apart. This is a very quick, easy, and fun way to think of your major scales. So the tetrachord is a four-note uh, scale arranged in in this sequence. Whole step, whole step, half step. And just remember, the two chunks are a whole step apart. That's very, very easy. And now you can play any scale on the guitar. Let's try. Okay. Okay. Well, I think we should just play the C scale first. We're going to go off book a little bit, but let's play the C scale starting from our note on the piano, that's middle C, but uh, on guitar, that's the octave above middle C in terms of reading the music. So let's play that note. Remember the two tetrachords. Here we go. Whole step, whole step, half step, take a break. You can finger it any way you want. I just go do, re, mi, fa. One, three, five, six. Don't worry about the, the, the fret names, though. Just remember that two frets equals a whole step and one fret equals a half step. So as long as you know your starting point, you don't even really need frets. I mean, in a way, you don't have to think one, three, five, six. How can I remember all these fret numbers? You don't have to look at the linear way that it's arranged along the neck. So tetrachord one. Do, re, mi, fa. Tetrachord two. Say, so where did I end up? Well, I ended up here. Uh, on the string 2 fret 6, and now let's begin our next tetrachord, the second half of the C scale. Remember to start it one whole step above where you ended. So, perfectly parallel. It's a parallel scale. You can play the same intervals, relationship intervalic, melodic intervals, in two chunks. It takes away some of the difficulty of having to get going on that second half of the scale. Let's play it in F. Done. See? All right. So string one, fret one, F. Whole step, whole step, half step. Go a whole step and start fresh. Whole step, whole step, half step. Let's play it in D. We're going to launch off of string two, fret three. D to E, whole step, whole step, half step. That made D to G. Now we're going to take a break of a whole step and start fresh. Hmm. Whole step, whole step, half step. My goodness. There's a little bit more to it. I mean, we build the chords off of the scale tones of one, four, and five, and um, those are the major chords. And that's kind of fun to look at as well. We don't have to do that right now. Let's try one more. Let's play a linear scale here off of the string three A note. Remember, whole step, whole step, half step, take a break. Yes, it always works out. Now, when it comes to playing across strings, It's a little less intuitive on the guitar, isn't it? That's playing two, almost two octaves of a major scale, almost about an octave and a half of a major scale, um, you know, vertically up and down. So that, a little bit of a different thing going on there. So that concludes, you know, what he's trying to tell us about um, tetrachords there. 
Now, we're going to move on, and I think I should make a separate video for page 13, part 2, Related Keys.